Hi, I am Aurel Enriquez, and this presentation contains our discussion on Chapter 1 of Seelies, which talks about the human organism. In this chapter, we have a lot of terminologies that we would have to first understand and remember para po guided tayo as we proceed with our next discussions. So first is anatomy. So when we're studying anatomy, we're focusing on the structures of things. So whether this be cells, tissues, organs, or literal body parts. No, basta po kapag sinabi natin anatomy, ang main focus natin is the structure, the parts, the compositions, you know, the physically observable things. Next is physiology. So now when we study physiology, we're now going to understand the function of those structures. Okay, so what is the purpose? Ano ang pakinabang ng mga structures that we have learned about when we studied those structures in an anatomical perspective? So, sa anatomy and physiology, together, that means we're studying the form and the function, the structure and the purpose of the human body. Next, um, we're given the term systemic physiology, wherein we would study the body organ system. So, dito po, we would look into the different organs and how they work together to uh, perform a similar function and how all of those different organ systems would work together to, to kind of like maintain the human body, right? So um, how do they perform um, functions that are important para sa pamumuhay ng isang normal human organism? Next, um, it also mentions here cellular physiology. So this studies body cells. So dito po malalaman natin um, ano ang functions ng iba't ibang mga cells and um, how do they perform these functions. Let's now look into the importance of anatomy and physiology. So listed here are some of the importance of studying anatomy and physiology. First up, this would help us understand how the body would respond to stimuli, whether this be internal or external stimuli, internal or external changes, all right? So um, example of an external change is the temperature of our surroundings. So kung halimbawa, napunta tayo sa isang malamig na lugar, paano mag-react yung body natin? Um, kapag napunta tayo sa isang mainit na lugar, anong gagawin ng human body? All right. An example of um, an example of an internal change naman po is um, what would happen if a person is dehydrated? So that's an internal change. That is something that is happening within the body. So that is a form of stimuli na kailangan mag-respond or our body has to do something about it. Alright, so ayan po, um, kasama na rin dito, nabanggit na rin doon yung environmental changes. So halimbawa, um, yun nga, changes in temperature, um, even the changes in um, like our circadian rhythms or yung um, sleep-wake cycle natin depending on whether it's day or it's night and other stuff like that. Kasama rin yan sa mga environmental changes or environmental cues. Um, next, um, anatomy and physiology is important also to understand diseases, all right? So, kung naiintindihan natin yung normal structure and yung normal function ng isang organ, yung normal structure and function ng isang cell and other structures or um, other things such as those, maiintindihan natin when there is something wrong with it, all right? Or ma Ma, magkakaroon tayo ng point of comparison. What is normal, what is healthy versus what it would look like if a certain structure or if a certain organ or um, a certain human in general is suffering from a disease. And ganun din po yung general idea when we're studying injuries. So kung ganito yung itsura and ganito yung function niya kapag normal ang isang organ, ano ang mangyayari kapag injured ang isang body organ or isang system. Let's now look into the different types of anatomy. First is systemic. So this one would study the body organ system. So dito po, again, um, this could be divided into like the major organ systems like integumentary, nervous system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, you know, those specific 
um, sets of organs that, again, they are grouped together because they are performing a similar function or they have a similar goal. Okay, so that's what we mean, or that would be our approach kung systemic anatomy po, um, kung bagay, parang ang guide natin sa pag -aaral. Next is regional. So this studies body regions. Um, hindi ito yung masyadong magiging focus natin as we go through the semester because as you can see right here, ito yung usual approach na ginagawa na po kapag nasa medical school na po ang mga students. Next, surface anatomy. This would study the external features, for example, bone projection. So, yung mga bagay na easily observable. Okay? So, literal na nasa surface o yung literal na madali nating makita at ma-observe. So, um, example of bone projections would be um, the shape of our jawline, the prominence of our collarbones, and stuff like that. Okay? Next is anatomical imaging. So, sa anatomical imaging, gumagamit na po tayo ng mga equipment, no? Para po, ayun nga, may mga internal structures tayo na ma-observe. So, this uses technology such as x-ray or radiology. This makes use of ultrasound or MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. So, any form of um, machine or equipment that we're using para ma-view natin yung mga internal structures of an organism without opening or physically opening up the organism. Um, that is an example of anatomical imaging. So we can see what's on the inside by um, making use of equipment that only make contact with the outside. Let's now talk about structural and functional organization. So, dito po, magsisimula tayo sa smallest units until we create or until we um, kind of like form an entire human organism. So, first up is at the chemical level. So, this is the smallest level of organization. So, dito po, sa chemical level, ang mga observe lang natin ay yung mga atoms, yung mga chemical bonds, yung mga... Um, elements like carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and the molecules or yung mga, yung nga po, those pieces or those, um, those atoms that have bonded together. So um, later on or sa next chapter po natin sa basic biochemistry, we talk more about this chemical level of organization. Pero for now, um, for this discussion, ayan po. Um, pag sinabi natin chemical organization or studying something at a chemical level, yun lang po muna yung iniintindi natin. All right? So, the molecules that make up something, the chemicals that would create something. Next is cellular level. So, at the cellular level, um, we have to understand that the cells are the basic unit of life. Okay, so living things, no, the basic unit or the building blocks of living things, no, are basically the cells, right? So, um, of course, no, these cells wouldn't be created if um, there wasn't like um, a an organization or kind of like an arrangement of um, chemicals that makes sense, no. Pero at the same time. If, for example, we have carbon, we have oxygen, we have hydrogen, but they're not arranged in a manner that makes sense or they're not arranged in a way na, ayun nga, um, the arrangement is necessary to create something that would be considered as a living organism, wala rin po itong say say. Okay, so again, um, the chemicals or the molecules that we have should be arranged in a way that it would eventually create cells. And dun pa lang po natin masasabi na something could be considered as a living organism because it has the basic unit of life. So cells, um, they have compartments and they have organelles. So examples of organelles would be the mitochondria, the nucleus, and as we progress with this discussion, enumerate din naman po natin lahat ng ibang mga organelles. But basically, um, when we say organelles, these are the tiny organs or um, kumbaga, sa isang cell, meron din siyang mga sariling mga organs, kumbaga, that would help it function. Next are tissues. So tissues, these are a group of cells with similar structure and function, plus the extracellular substances that they would release. So kanina, 
kapag po pinagsama-sama natin yung mga chemicals, they could create cells. Ngayon po, kung pagsasama-samahin natin yung mga cells na, yun nga, magkakamuka at magkakaparehas ng ginagawa, that would now create tissues. So, um, listed here are the four general kind of like classifications of tissues. So, first up are epithelial, usually ito yung mga covering, yung main function nila. Connective, as the name implies, these are the type of tissues that hold the other tissues together or put them together or you know as the name implies connect them together so next are muscular so muscular tissues these are the types of tissues that help with movement and next are nervous tissues so nervous tissues these are the ones that are included in our nervous system simula sa brain spinal cord and all the other nerves that extend to all our to all the other um, body parts that we would have. Okay, next are organs. So, kanina, kapag pinagsama-sama natin yung mga necessary na chemicals, we might create cells. Kapag pinagsama-sama natin yung mga cells na magkakamuka at parehas ang ginagawa, same structure and function, we could create tissues. Now, if we arrange tissues together, again, in a manner that makes sense, we may eventually create organs. Okay? So as you can see right here, two or more tissue types acting together to perform a specific function or certain function. So that's what we mean when we say organs. So examples of this would be the stomach. So sa stomach po, may iba't ibang klase ng cells that, are, that could be found in the stomach. Pero ayun po, ayun nga po, they serve a similar function which is to store the food and digest the food items that we have eaten. All right? Next is the heart. Ayun po, may iba't ibang klase rin ng cells na pwedeng mahanap sa heart, pero what is its main function? To contract and pump the blood, di ba? So ayun po, um it's totally fine na magkakaiba na yung mga tissue types na pwedeng magsama-sama as long as they're still kind of like working together to perform a specific function. Okay, so in this example, we are shown um the walls of a urinary bladder. So notice that it is in fact composed of different types of tissues, but it forms the same function, di ba? To hold the urine and to, to eventually excrete no? the urine or to contract during urination kapag puno na yung urinary bladder. So this is an example of different tissues um, connected together to form one organ. Next, our organ system. So, this one is now composed of a group of organs. Ma marami at magkakaibang mga organs which are contributing or working together to some function. So, although marami at magkakaibang organs na yung natin, again, they have this kind of like an end goal, alright? Na dapat lahat sila ay ma-achieve nila ito um, as they perform their functions. So, in this example or illustration shown here, we have the urinary system. So, hiwalay na organ po ang kidneys, hiwalay na organ yung ureters, hiwalay na organ yung urinary bladder and urethra. But as you can see right here, they're all connected, diba? So, the kidney is the initial area where urine formation would start. And then, that's our, this is directly connected to the ureters, alright? So, yung ureters, ito yung parang um, long, hollow tube that would connect the kidneys or yung area kung saan initially nagawa yung urine to the urinary bladder. So again, tulad na namanggit ko sa previous slide, the urina urinary bladder is there to store the urine and eventually contract para marilis yung urine. And the urethra, this is um, here to connect the urinary bladder to the outside. So yun po, again, multiple different parts or different organs working together towards a, to, towards um the same goal or yun nga towards um, an end goal. Okay, so that's um, the idea of studying an organ system. And next level of organization is at the organism level. So dito po lahat ng mga magkakaibang organ systems, they are now seen to be working together. This is something that we would understand further as we progress through our discussions um, in the following weeks. Okay, so malalaman natin na 
kahit magkakaiba yung mga organs at magkakaiba yung ginagawa ng cardiovascular system, ng respiratory system, ng nervous system, maintindihan natin na may mga functions sila na overlap or may mga functions sila na hindi nila kayang ma-fulfill if they don't work with the other. Alright? So, ayan po. This would include the associated microorganisms such as intestinal bacteria. Ito naman po, hindi ko muna explain further dito. Um, we talk more about this pagdating natin sa digestive system. So, in this photo shown right here, um, as, uh, as an example of an entire organism, we have a human child. This slide right here just shows us kind of like um, an illustration no, of all the things that we've discussed in the previous slides all together. So again, um, we would take different types of chemicals, different types of atoms, bond them together to create molecules, um, put those molecules together to create one cell. Okay, And then we would take similar cells and similar functioning cells, and then that would create one tissue. And then after that, we could take... Um, different tissues that could perform similar functions to create an organ and then putting those different organs together that could, ayun nga, work, they could work together for an end goal and that would be um, the organ level of um, arrangement. And then after that, no, putting all of these organ systems together, we would create one organism. Now, for the purposes of this discussion or for this course, no, we would be focusing on humans. This slide is just showing us some of the major organs in the body. So we have the brain and spinal cord, which is the main organs of the nervous system. We have the lungs, arter or tama, the lungs, which is the main organ of the respiratory system. And then um, in the middle of that, is the heart. May nakikita rin po tayo mga blood vessels dito. Those are the main organs of the cardiovascular system. Right here at the abdominal cavity, nakikita natin yung major organs ng digestive system. And then dito po sa baba yung um, urinary system. Now, for males and females, magkaiba po yung structure. Dito rin natin makikita sa um, pelvic region, no? yung area for reproductive organs. This slide now shows us the different organ systems ng magkakahiwalay, alright? So, this one shows us the integumentary system which focuses on the skin. Um, this one um, shows us the skeletal system which focuses um, on the bones, the joints, and the cartilage that could be found in our body. This one is the muscular system, lahat ng muscles that help us move. Dito natin makikita or dito natin aaralin. Next is the nervous system. So again, main components are brain, spinal cord, and the nerves that extend outwards. Malalaman po natin um, how do they work and how do they control all these other organ systems. This next slide is just a continuation of that. Um, again, as we can see right here, the lymphatic system, this is focused on our immune system. The respiratory system, ayan po, main components are the lungs and all the other um, associated organs simula sa nasal cavity. Um, next is the digestive system. This one um, is not that difficult to study, pero ang dami po kasi nila, as you can see right here. Next is the urinary system, na daanan na natin to sa previous examples kanina. And shown right here are the female and the male reproductive systems. Let's look at a few other definition of terms. First is organization. So in terms of anatomy and physiology, when we say um, organization, it means the functional interrelationships between parts. So ang example po nito is yung mga nabanggit natin kanina na magkakaibang mga tissues that would work to, together to create an organ, magkakaibang organs that are connected together for um, performing a specific function or a specific end goal. So, ayun po, different things working together. That's what we mean when we say functional interrelationships. Next is metabolism. So, when we say metabolism, this is the sum of all chemical and physical changes sustaining an organism. So, um, whether they make use of enzymes, whether they create proteins and other stuff they, like that, um, yun po, um, anything that 
a cell or tissue would be doing that involves ayun nga po, um, chemical processes and physical changes no para patuloy na mabuhay yung isang cell or yung isang structure no that's a form of metabolism now usually for humans um, this would include the ability to acquire and use energy in support of these changes so um, basically if walang energy source, no, if there's no energy source, in our case, um, a source of ATP or adenosine triphosphate, um, hindi rin magagawa ng cells natin itong mga physical and chemical reactions na ito. So that's um, what we mean when we say metabolism. Next is responsiveness. So this is the ability to sense and respond to environmental changes. All right. So this would include both internal and external environments. So nabanggit na rin po natin yung example kanina, di ba, when we were talking about the um, importance of studying anatomy and physiology. Again, kapag sinabi natin responsiveness, no, ito yung capability ng mga um, cells natin, ng mga organs natin na mapansin or masense na may kakaiba in their environment or within themselves and respond to these changes. So if it's a bad change, they have to do something to kind of like revert back to that favorable growth environment. All right. And ayun nga po, again, examples of internal changes would be um, things that nangyayari within the human body like dehydration, um, excessive blood cholesterol, um, excessive amounts of sugars within our diet. That's something that is happening within the inside. Pero kapag sinabi natin external environments, that is something that we can't always directly control, like um, the temperature or um, the changes in the changes in the weather or um, other things like that. Or for example, kung nagta-travel kayo sa magkakaibang um, countries, um, there's nothing we could do about the time that they have, diba? the, the gap in time. So, um, maaaring, maaaring masense din ng human body yung difference between um, coming from a place kung saan araw, tapos bigla ka mapupunta sa place kung saan gabi na sa kanila in a span of time that is not usually... Um, kind of like normal for us, all right? Or parang kumbaga hindi yun yung tamang um, span of time in our body clock. So yeah, that's an example of an external um, change in the environment. But basically, no, coming back, when we say responsiveness, again, ito yung capability no body natin, no nervous system natin to sense that something has changed and to respond to that change. Next, when we say growth, this is simply the increase in size, so enlargement of something. When we say development, this is the changes in form and size. So dito po sa development, hindi lang yung size yung nagbabago. Maaaring pati yung shape, pati yung ibang mga structures, pwede rin magbago. Alright, so that's what we mean when we say development. Next is reproduction. This is the formation of new cells. Okay, so dito, hindi lang yung size nagbabago, but also yung number of new cells. So it could be the generation of new individuals or tissue repair. All right. So there are two kind of like, um, there are two ways on how we could use the term reproduction. So when we say reproduction, we could say it in a sense that a new organism is being created. In this case, a new human has been born. Or pwede rin naman, when we say reproduction, um, we're talking about reproduction on a cellular level. So, halimbawa, may tissue damage, no? new cells would be created to repair that tissue. All right, so um, at this point, I hope everybody's following along. My highlights na po yung mga mahalagang bagay na kailangan nating um, i-focus or kailangan nating tandaan sa bawat slide. Next terminology that we would be talking about is homeostasis. So when we say homeostasis, this is the maintenance of constant internal environment despite fluctuations in the external environment. So um, again, i-simplify natin itong statement na to. Kahit may iba't ibang bagay daw na nangyayari on the outside, our body should be able to have some form of control and maintain what is normal for the things that are inside. Okay? So, ayan po. We have here different variables. So, variables, these are body properties that could change in value. So, listed here are examples of va variables. 
all right body temperature which again um, i've already mentioned this earlier this could be influenced by an external environment or by the change in the external environment so um, kung halimbawa napunta tayo sa malamig na lugar our body has to do something to maintain um, the normal temperature which is 35 to 37 degrees celsius di ba po um ex other examples would include heart rate so ayan po um sometimes we're when we're doing um, intense physical activities like running, playing sports, and other stuff like that, no heart rate increases. So eventually, um, the body would sense that and it would have to do something to bring down the heart rate back to normal. Same with body, or same with um, blood pressure. So I have different factors as to how blood pressure can increase or decrease. Mapag usapan po natin yan when we talk about um, when we talk about blood vessels or yung third segment ng discussion for the cardiovascular system but again if there are changes in the blood pressure the nervous system or the body in general has to be able to sense that and bring it back to the normal measurement of blood pressure Continuing on with the conversation of homeostasis, and we have what is known as set points. Now, set points for some variables can be temporarily adjusted depending on body activities as needed. So, and listed here are some examples. Body temperature, mean sun, um, another cause of change could be fever. This one is something that is a bit more internal in terms of where the change is happening. Usually, people have fevers kasi may infection sila. They have acquired um, a pathogenic bacteria, a ha harmful bacteria, or a harmful virus. Now, the body is attempting to fight that bacteria or that virus by increasing the temperature. So, ayan po, um, fever could change the body temperature. Um, next is exercise. All right, exercise could increase the heart rate, increase the blood pressure, and increase also our respiratory rate or our rate of breathing. So, ayan po. Again, um, it is normal na aangat itong mga bagay na ito when a person is experiencing or doing these types of things. Still on homeostasis, let's look into these different um, terminologies. First is receptor. So this one detects the changes in the variables. So kung baga yung receptor, ito po yung unang part or unang organ na makakasense na, okay, may nagbabago nga, may change nga na nangyayari um, within the human organism. Next is the control center. So this would receive the signal, would establish a set point, and send a signal to the effector. So yung control center, dito po, or ito yung, kumbaga, ito yung mga organs responsible for processing the information that was received by the receptor. So, kung napansin na, halimbawa, um, let's use our skin as an example. Um, kung halimbawa, nadikit kayo sa isang lugar na masyadong mainit, nakakapaso, di ba? The normal response would be is that you would pull your hand away from the source of the heat. Diba? So, our receptor for that, um, in this example that I'm saying, could be our skin. Now, ang control center natin, obviously, would be our brain. So, ipoprocess ng brain natin yung nasense, no? na temperature ng skin natin, and it would tell our muscles to move our hand away. Now, yun po, our muscles is now our effector organs. The effector organs directly causes change. So, kung nadetect ng skin natin na may mainit, um, ipoprocess nung brain natin na mainit nga yung part na yun at kailangan lumayo tayo, uutusan niya yung muscle na igalaw yung kamay para ilayo natin yung kamay natin dun sa area kung saan may naramdaman tayong nakakapaso. Alright? So, yun po. That's an example of how the receptor, control center, and effector organ would work together. Next, let's now talk about orientation and directional terms. For this one, um, in edit ko po itong PowerPoint na to, and ang in insert ko, ang gagamitin ko for this part of the discussion would be the same slides that are being used in the laboratory. Um, kasi po, medyo mas malinaw yung explanation nila dito in comparison to 
um, the original slides that were used in this discussion. All right, so po. Um, let's now look into the different terms that is being used, yung descriptions for these different terms, and an example para maintindihan natin what these different words would mean. First is when we say something is superior. So when we say superior, this is towards the head or at the upper part. Okay? So kapag sinabi nating superior, nasa itaas. It is at the top or it is the structure that could be found above. So in this example that we're seeing right here, the forehead is superior to the nose. Okay, ulitin natin, yung noo ay nasa itaas or mas mataas kaysa sa ilong. Okay, so it makes sense. Tama naman, the forehead is superior to the nose because the forehead is a structure that could be found um, at at the top or parang above, no, above the nose. So, and po, when we say superior, it's above, it's at the top or it's at the upper area. So, we can see right here in this illustration. Next is caudal uh, or inferior, sorry. Um, usually, hindi na po natin ginagamit yung ibang terminologies dito, no, like cranial, cephalid, caudal, ventral, or dorsal. Usually, these terms are used more in studying zoology, okay, which does not apply to us because we will focus on human anatomy. So again, for this one, um, let's focus on the term inferior. So when we say inferior, something is um, away from the head or towards the lower part or is located below. Okay, So nasa ibaba daw po or nasa mas mababa na area ang isang structure when we say it is inferior. So, kabalik taran lang siya ng superior. Let's look at this example. The navel, alright, the belly button, yung pusod, this is inferior to the breastbone. The breastbone is our sternum or yung bone na nasa pagitan ng ribs natin. Okay, so tama naman, no? Nasa mas mababa na area yung belly button in comparison to the breastbone. So this one is also correct. Ayan. Next is um the term in or sorry. Next is the um term anterior. All right. So kapag sinabi natin anterior, something is towards the front. All right. Nasa harapan daw ang isang bagay. So in this example shown here, the breastbone is anterior to the spine. Okay. So yung breastbone daw po or yung sternum natin ay nasa harap, tas nasa likod daw po nito yung spine, which is also correct. Let's compare that to the next terminology, which is posterior. So when we say something is posterior, it's at the back or it's a structure that could be found behind another structure. So um, let's look at this example. The heart is posterior to the breastbone. Now, um, again, ulitin natin yung location ng breastbone. No? The breastbone this is located in the middle of the ribs, all right? So it's kind of, it connect, kind of like connects the ribs together. And your rib gauge kasi natin nasa loob nito, yung lungs at the sides and the heart is in the middle. So tama lang, no? The heart is posterior to the breastbone or nasa likod ng breastbone yung heart. Kasi the breastbone is there to protect the heart. Okay, so po. again, when we say posterior, something is at the back or is a structure that could be found behind something else. Next is medial. As the name implies, this is something in the middle. Okay, so towards the midline or the inner side. So the heart is medial to the arm. So nasa labas, no, nasa labas or nasa sides yung arms and the heart is in the middle. So it's medial in terms of location. Next is the term lateral. So this one is away from the midline or away from the middle and more on the outside. So and both the arms are lateral to the chest, meaning on the outside or nasa mas labas na area, yung arms in comparison to the chest, with it, which is in the middle. Next is intermediate. This one is between a more medial and a more lateral structure. So it's not exactly on the outside, but it's also not really in the middle. So pag sinabi natin intermediate, ayan po, it's kind of like an in-between kind of like location. So as we can see here in this example, the armpit is intermediate between the breastbone and the shoulder. So yung shoulder Mas nasa labas, mas lateral yung shoulder, pero yung breastbone, mas medial or mas nasa gitna yung location niya. So, ang in-between nun 
is yung general location ng armpit. Next is proximal. So this one is close to the origin of the body part or at the point of attachment. Mas maintindihan natin to by looking at this example given here. The elbow is proximal to the wrist. All right. So ang titingnan natin na point of attachment is kung nasa nakaduktong yung arm. Nasaan ba nakaduktong yung arm? Nasa shoulder area, di ba? Sa bandang balikat, sa bandang shoulders, dun yung main point of attachment no arm natin, right? So now, it's saying, no, that the elbow is proximal to the wrist. Ang elbow daw ay mas malapit sa point of attachment in comparison to the wrist, okay? Next is distal. This is farther from the origin of a body part or the point of attachment. So, kabalik tara nito yung proximal. Let's look at this example. The knee is distal to the thigh. Alright? So, ulitin natin, nasaan ba ang point of attachment ng thigh? Nasa hips, di ba? So, basically, sinasabi nito na mas malayo yung tuhod kesa sa hita in terms of point of attachment, which is yung hips. Okay? So, ayun po. Next is superficial. So when we say superficial, this is toward the body surface. This one is quite easy to understand. So kung ano lang yun nasa ibabaw, yun yung superficial. So the skin is superficial to the skeleton. Dahil tama nga naman po, yung skin natin yung sa labas, yung skeletons natin ay yung nasa loob. And um, ang kabalik na nito ay deep. So when we say deep, this is away from the surface and more internal. So the lungs are deep to the rib cage. Again, anong structure ng rib cage? It is there surrounding the lungs and the heart. So tama lang no. Um yung lungs ay nasa loob ng rib cage. So it is deep within the rib cage because the rib cage is a structure that is outside. Next are body planes. So for this one, um ito po, these are these are simply um, kind of like ways on how we would cut something for us to be able to observe it. First is median or mid-sagittal. So, kapag sinabi natin mid-sagittal, um, guys, i-oversimplify ko na yung explanation dito. Ha. When we say median, literal, nasa gitna natin hinate, and this would give us a side view, as we can see right here in this example. So, we cut it right in the middle, and makikita natin yung side view ng brain, ng nose, ng oral cavity, spinal cord. Alright? So, that's what we mean when we say median. We literally split something in half and look at it at something that looks like a side view. Next is frontal. Pag sinabi natin frontal, this one is quite easy to remember. Kasi literal, we cut something right in its front. Alright? Or nakaharap sa atin yung structure, tas tsaka natin siya hinate. So, um, we're kind of like give, being given a front view. As we can see right here in this example. So, nakikita natin yung front view ng lungs, ng heart, and ng stomach. Alright? So, that's what you mean when we say frontal. Next is transverse plane. So, dito, the transverse plane would divide something um, in terms of the superior and inferior structures. Okay? So, hinahati daw nito ang mga bagay-bagay sa mga structures na nasa itaas at sa mga structures na nasa ibaba. So, in this example, para tayong nakatingin um, from above or kind of like, it's kind of like a top view for us. So, and po, that's what it looks like when we are looking through a transverse plane. Again, pag median, sa gitna yung hati and makakakita tayo ng side view. Pag sinabing frontal, sa harapan yung hati and front view yung makikita natin. At pag sinabing transverse plane, hinati nito or pinaghiwalay nito yung superior structures and yung inferior structures. Giving us something that kind of looks like a top view. This slide simply shows us or kind of like lists down the specific components of each region. So, kapag sinabing upper limbs, no, this is the entirety of our arm. So, yung upper arm, forearm, wrist, and hand, that's um, considered as the upper limb. Yung lower limbs, of course, the ones right here. So, the thigh, lower leg, ankle, and foot. So, the central region would be the one na nasa medial or in the middle, diba? which is the head, neck, and trunk. 
Okay, so again, upper limbs, itong dalawa on the outside, yung arms. Lower limbs, itong dalawa on the, um, right here at the bottom or nasa inferior side, which is um, the two legs, kasama na mula sa thigh hanggang sa foot. And then central region would be head, neck, and trunk, or those ones at the middle. Next, um, let's look into the different body cavities. So this one um, talks about the dorsal body cavity, which would enclose the organs of the nervous system. Again, the main components of the nervous system natin is the brain and the spinal cord. So ito pong color green, no? Yan po yung um, entire dorsal cavity. Now it's further divided into two. The cranial cavity contains the brain, which is right here and the vertebral canal, which would contain the spinal cord, which can be found right here. Next is the ventral body cavity. This contains um, a lot of the major internal organs. So there are different divisions to this. The thoracic, which is right here, and then the abdominopelvic cavity, which is right here. Now, the thoracic cavity is the space within the chest wall and the diaphragm, which again, it's these areas right here. Okay, so ito yung frontal view. Ito naman po yung, um, kumbaga yung mid-sagittal view. Alright, so ayan po. Um, next is the mediastinum. So this is the space between the lungs. So sa mediastinum, specifically, no, dito natin makikita yung heart, thymus, um, esophagus, and trachea. So kung kanina, yung thoracic cavity ay itong isang buong ito, no? yung mediastinum po is itong dalawang areas lang na ito sa gitna. Next is the abdominal cavity. Um, ito po naka-highlight na important segments. Um, this one starts from the diaphragm and hanggang sa pelvis which is right here. Kapag sinabi naman pelvic cavity, ayan po, this is specifically concentrated dun sa pelvis only. So this would contain um, the urinary bladder and the reproductive organs. So it's right here. Dito po yung pelvic cavity. All right. Um, some portions of the large intestine may also extend to this part. Next, let's talk about serous membranes. So serous membranes, these would lie in the trunk cavities and um, these would also cover the organs in the ventral body cavity. So there are three different structures of serous membranes, visceral, parietal, and yung mismo cavity. Kapag sinabing visceral, this one would cover the organs. So yung mga visceral serous membrane, ito yung mga um, structures or coverings na nakadikit mismo dun sa organs. Okay? So again, pag sinabing visceral, this is any form of um, tissue or covering that is directly connected or is directly covering the organ. Kapag naman sinabi nating parietal serous membrane, this would line the walls of the cavity. So yung parietal membrane, these are the ones that we could find on the outside. Okay, so kumbaga nakadigit siya dun sa external surrounding, okay? Hindi dun sa mismong organ. And next is the cavity. This is a fluid-filled space between the membranes. So, again, yung visceral nakadikit dun sa organ, yung parietal nakadikit sa surrounding, yung space in between that would now be referred to as the cavity. So here are the main cavities that we should be familiar with. The pericardial cavity is around the heart. So, yung membranes, no? Either yung um, nakadikit dun sa mismong heart or nakadikit sa paligid would be referred to as the pericardium. So kapag nakadikit yung covering sa mismong heart, this is the um, this is the kind of like visceral pericardium. Pero kapag nakadikit ito to the outside, this is the parietal pericardium. Next is the pleural cavity. So the pleural cavity, ito yung nasa paligid or yung space sa paligid ng lungs. Okay? So, ayan po. Um, kapag sinabi natin yung, yung covering is nakadikit dun sa mismong lungs, then this is the visceral pleura. But it, it, if it is located on the walls of the um, chest cavity, then we may refer to this as the parietal 
pleura. Next is the peritoneal cavity. Ito yung space na nasa abdominopelvic region. So, ayan po. Kapag nakadikit sa mismong organs yung um, covering na na-observe natin, then we would refer to this as the visceral peritoneum. Pero kapag nakadikit ito to everywhere else or dun sa outside, then we would refer to this as the parietal peritoneum. So, ayan po, this slide just shows us um, a visual illustration of what I've explained earlier. Again, visceral pericardium, nakadikit sa mismong heart. Parietal pericardium, nasa labas. Pericardial cavity, yun yung space sa pagitan ng mga yun. Same explanation with the coverings of the lungs. Kapag sinabing visceral pleura, this is directly connected to the lungs and when we say parietal pleura this is connected to the thoracic cavity all right or the thorax now um, the space on that or the space between those two areas would be referred to as the pleural cavity this slide shows us a visual representation of the peritoneum again when we say visceral peritoneum this is um, the the type of connective tissue that would cover those um, organs that could be found in the abdominal cavity and also would keep them in place. So yung visceral peritoneum did po yung responsible for our digestive system for staying in place. Kung bakit hindi nawawala sa lugar yung stomach, yung small intestine, yung liver, and all those other organs. So and po, this is because of the visceral peritoneum. Again, it would cover and also anchor the digestive organs or the organs that could be found in the peritoneal cavity. That ends our discussion on Chapter 1 of Sealies. Again, I am Aurel Enriquez. Thank you so much for listening.